Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Jennifer and today we are going to do a Q&A. I think this is the first Q&A that I've ever done. Um, yes, it is. And thank you, thank you for being such loyal subscribers. All of these questions came right off of the community tab. So I believe that only subscribers see, can see that community tab. So if you have not subscribed yet, be sure to do that so that you can be in on uh, my next call out for questions. You guys did not disappoint. I think that there's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30 questions. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get all of those done here uh, in one sitting, but I'm gonna try my hardest. I have exactly one hour before I have to leave and the house is completely quiet. Warren has, um, he actually has our four youngest, three of them have dentist appointments this morning so he ran them out to the dentist and he took Joseph along too because anyways he did. So I'm not even going to introduce everybody at this point because as the questions, whoops, because as I answer these questions you're going to learn a lot about our family. So let's just get on with this. So the first question is from Crystal Young and she says, do you find yourself worrying who will care for Joseph when you're no longer able to? And then I think she continues to say, how do you think having a sibling with special needs impacts your other children? All right, so I definitely, um, I'll just say this right off the top here, I'm not by nature a worrier. Uh, I do wonder, I guess, about things. I do think about things, but by nature, I'm just not a worrier. So do I worry about who's gonna care for Joseph when we're gone? I would say I don't really worry about that, but Warren and I have talked about that. We've talked about our, we've talked about that with our older children, and it's definitely something we need to revisit again, especially now that we have, um, you know, we do have two adult children, 21 and 19, and so we do have to um, just kind of revisit that. So at this point, you know, with him only being 10, I guess, I, I guess I know anything can happen to Warren and I at any time, but I haven't, we haven't spent a lot of time discussing that or, um, or, or worrying about it at this point. After the new year, we do have to update our will. It's been a long time since we've done that. So I do know that there's gonna be a lot of discussions coming about that as far as uh, if we're gonna set up a special needs trust or, um, or just all of that. I know that we're gonna have to sit down and really talk about some of those, um, some of those potentially difficult and hard um, topics. So her next question is, how do you think having a sibling with special needs impacts your other children. I definitely think it's made them more patient. I think it's made them uh, a little bit more understanding of differences and people that might have some diffi some some difficulties. Um, I find that that they've learned to be more accepting of others as well. It also can be hard at times. Um, you know, it's not all just probably positive. There probably are some negative things. I mean, definitely Warren and I have to have our mind on Joseph a lot. <laughs> I, I oftentimes I've said to people, if I'm having a conversation with you and I seem like I'm distant, it's because my mind is on Joseph. Where is Joseph? What is he doing? Has he taken off? Is he by the water? Is he by equipment? There's a lot of things that are going through my mind at all times. So I definitely think that that happens has an impact on our other kids because um, I do find that sometimes to give them the focused attention, I really, really, to give them focused attention, I really, really have to work at focusing because like I said, I'm just always thinking about Joseph. Next questions are from Haley and she has a number of questions. Her first one is, did you always want a big family? Well, when Warren and I got married, I wanted five children, he wanted four children, we have seven. So I'm not sure if that is, if five and four is what anybody considers a big family uh, or not, but that's, that's how it went. <laughs> She also asks, how did you make the decision to homeschool? Well, I, first off, I'll say I was a science teacher before, um, being, before being a mom. And um, so I did have an inside look into the school system. Good, I mean, I, I didn't have complaints at the time about it or anything. But what happened is that as Emily approached turning five years old, I started to, um, you know, I met a few people that homeschooled and I remember meeting a couple older kids that, that were homeschooled. They were probably around middle school or so and I thought, boy, these are really pleasant people. And well, actually I met them and thought they were very pleasant people for being middle school middle schoolers and having had experience with that age bracket, having taught seventh, eighth and ninth grade, um, I knew kind of what the general average middle school, junior high age 
student is like. And so when I met these kids, I just thought, boy, they are just so pleasant and they're so willing to talk to adults. They were thoughtful in their questions and in the way they answered things and they're just all around pleasant people. And I later came to find out that they were homeschooled and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. So I just kind of started looking into it and reading. This was well before the time of blogs and all of the online resources that we have. And so I just went to the library and typed in homeschooling and I just checked out every single book I possibly could on homeschooling and all the way from how to choose curriculum to why would you want to homeschool to um, just just everything and I don't remember any particular book that had a huge impact on me but because I read so many of them but anyways I just read and read and read and event and talked about it with Warren as she approached five I thought boy I'm not really ready to give her up yet um, I could I could foresee keeping her around a little bit longer because I like her. And so, um, yeah, so we just decided to homeschool and we thought, let's just give it a try. Let's try it for a year. And the next year, Nick jumped jumped on board being in kindergarten and we gave that another try. And we've basically been, and we've been homeschooling ever since, taking it a year at a time. Every year we reevaluate and be sure what we're doing is right for our family. Haley also asks, did any of your children ever request public school or resist homeschooling? So they did request public school and so far our three oldest have all had times where they've taken classes at our uh, local high school. So Emily, who's already graduated and entering the, the full-time working world here coming up in January, back when she was in high school, she did take orchestra and Spanish for um, three years of high school, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. When she first started 10th grade, she had made some comments that she might like to go full time um, at the high school, but by semester she kind of was already, mm, I think I'll just stick with these couple classes, and she continued to do that. I think she had a good experience. She went to Ecuador uh, through the, the Spanish um, program at, at the high school and everything, um, was first chair in orchestra, and just I think she overall had a good experience with that, but also enjoyed the homeschooling aspect as well. Uh, Nick, he took two classes only one year at the high school. He took two um, like tech ed style classes. And again, he loved his teachers, uh, liked the material, but he uh, felt like he was being held back because they had to go over so many safety rules and everything that kids just seemed to not want to be willing to follow. I'm getting more into, this is more than the question asked. The question simply asked, did they <laughs> request public school or resist homeschooling? Um, so yes, that they did um, request public school. And we actually, so I, I should say with Nick, he did not request it. We actually made him take those two classes um, just so that he would get some experience having another teacher and um, you know just being in a large group setting. He did also take classes at our local technical college. He ended up starting off college with 11 or 12 credits, I believe, um, that went straight towards his degree and really eased up all of his semesters of school. Amber also took some classes her sophomore year at, at the local high school. She took Spanish and a couple different art classes. Again, she liked the classes, um, but wasn't overly thrilled with the high school experience. I think it's because she felt a little bit like an outsider coming in. So this year she decided to do, um, to go back to full homeschooling. The next one from Haley is, what's the most rewarding and most challenging aspects of having a big family? Hands down, the most rewarding, it's just people. I love having everybody around. I love the dynamics of a large family. I just love that I have so many people to love and there's so many people to love me back. And that's exactly the most challenging thing too. There's so many people to love and there's so many people loving me back that sometimes you feel a little bit, it's easy for me to feel a little bit overwhelmed by all of it. So yeah, just time. You know, time, there's only so much time no matter if you have one child or if you have seven children. And so spreading that time around and making it quality and um, just just time, that, that definitely can be kind of a trick. She also says, was pregnancy hard on you? Um, no, I don't think so. The first pregnancy was the hardest. I had the most morning sickness. Um, but I wouldn't say it was overly hard on me. Um, I, Warren might have a different answer to that though. <laughs> 
how did you homeschool with a newborn? I had a carrier of all sorts. I've had er an ergo, I had a sling, I had a backpack. Um, so I just kept my babies on me and not just newborns, but all the way. So probably until, boy, even through toddlers, as long as I could hold them on me some way, I kept them in some kind of carrier. It was just easier to get things done when I had them in a carrier. I was actually talking about this somehow came up just the other day and Sam said to me, he's like, you had a baby on you all the time. And yeah, I did. I did dishes, I cooked, I homeschooled, um, I tilled the garden, everything. So I guess I just always, um, I always felt like there was always something that needed to get done and the only way to make it happen was to put that baby on me. So that's how we homeschooled as well. She says, I love your family. God bless. Thank you very much, Haley. Okay, moving on to Carmen Delgado. She, and I'm sorry if I say your last names wrong. Do you plan to have any more children? P.S. Love your family vlogs and cooking shows. Carmen, do we plan on having any more children? Well, I will just put this out there. I am 46 years old. I think that um, it's probably more and more difficult for me every single year to um, conceive a baby. I will also say that we are not doing, we do not use any form of artificial birth control. So there's your answer. <laughs> All right, so who am I asks, how did you and your husband meet? Uh, this is a good story and I'm gonna try not to make it too long, but I graduated from college and I started teaching in the town where we live, right? And I started teaching in the town where we live right now. And um, part of me being hired as a new teacher, I had to go back and take a couple extra classes because they wanted me to teach a branch of science that I had not currently, that I wasn't currently certified for. So I had to go back and take some geology classes and astronomy and meteorology classes because like I said, my degree was in life science, biology, chemistry, health education, and I did not have that aspect of the earth science portion. But I was gonna be teaching ninth grade, and so they wanted me to take those classes to get certified. So, I um, two of the classes that I had to take were actually field trip style classes. They were one or two credits long, and it was a full weekend where you met at, at back at the college where I had graduated from, and you did one was Northwestern Wisconsin, and where you toured around in these big 15 passenger vans and camped, or you could stay in a hotel, or not even hotels, uh, like little motels. Um, and so anyways, I had two of those. So one was the first weekend, the first full weekend of September. The second one was the first full weekend of October. So lo and behold, I was waiting with the with the person I was gonna be sharing a tent with, Cassie. We were waiting, I had just met Cassie that morning as well. So this guy walks over uh, to join the group and he had on this black nylon jacket, snap down. I don't know if you guys remember the kind, had a collar with like usually stripes on it and the ribbing had stripes on it and the waistband had stripes on it. Anyways, he walked over that was black and yellow and he had a black and red Wilson duffel bag. And I turned to Cassie, I kid you not, I turned to her and I said, I'm gonna marry that guy. And here we are. <laughs> There's a lot that happened in between time, but that's how we met. I made sure that I positioned myself on those vans the best I could to be close to him and to get to know him a little bit more. And lo and behold, found out that he actually lived in the same town where I was teaching. And, um, and here we are. It's 22 years later. Jamie S. says, could you do a house tour? I really don't have any plans to ever do a full house tour. I think that through vlogging um, and kind of vlogging daily life and homeschooling and stuff, I share a lot of my house. I've had lots of videos where we've been in the school room, which is where I actually am right now. I do cooking videos so you see my kitchen. Um, our dining room has been on display. Our living room is always in the background. I've showed you our bedroom when I did the finally, what did I name that video? Finally sprucing up my bedroom with the bedscape sheets, which let me tell you guys, every night when we get into bed, we still are saying, oh my gosh, these are the greatest sheets. Um, we, we really, really do love them that much. We don't have that big of a home actually, so really what you see is what you get. I think, I've actually even filmed in the girls' room before when we were doing a wedding dress unboxing. I've never filmed 
No, I think there was some footage in Sam's room as well. He was doing suctioning. What was he doing? He was doing vacuum uh, mohawks, him and Peter one day, and that was in their room. So I've pretty much showed just about our whole house. All we have left is two bathrooms, and I've actually been in both of those bathrooms in my laundry videos. Okay, so Jody Ann, she says, what is your family's Christmas tradition, and how do you keep all the kids and hubby content happy keep the household going so i'm not sure if those are two separate questions what is your family's christmas tradition so for many years our christmas tradition was to go to mass on christmas morning because the kids were part of the christmas uh, nativity gospel reading uh, then things changed over at our church and they no, no longer do that so then we started going to christmas eve mass because that was just working the best for our family we'd go it was at 4 p.m and then we'd come home we have uh, a whole lot of uh, hors d'oeuvres like heavy snacks and then we open up all and exchange all of our presents that night santa comes overnight stockings happen in the morning and i make a big brunch and then we always later in the day sometime have a ham dinner and typically we have snow and so we do some kind of sledding or something like that Christmas afternoon or just play with toys, take it easy. Maybe if somebody got a DVD, we might watch that. But that's basically our tradition. This year, actually three of our kids were scheduled to serve on Christmas Day. So we are gonna go back to uh, Christmas morning mass and so it'll be a little bit different. And last year we changed it up again and we actually went to midnight mass for the first time. That was received mm, kind of all over the place. Some of us liked it, some not so much. But um, so as far as tradition, I guess that would be it. I also did a traditions video. Maybe I can pop a link up here if I remember. Um, I did a traditions video where we did kind of traditions. I didn't do just Christmas traditions, but traditions throughout the year as well with that video. And then she also asks, how do you keep all the kids and hubby content and happy and keep the household going? I don't think everybody is always content and happy. And the, sometimes the household is not always going smoothly. That is just the honest truth. But I think the best way to keep people content and happy is to just be content and happy myself. I think I'm very, I, I am a very content person. There's not a whole lot that I long for or wish for. And I do think that um, keeping religion in the forefront of our home and making sure that people understand that God does have a plan for each and every one of us uh, and that, um, you know, we do make decisions and our decisions do affect our life in keeping us content and happy. Um, but, you know, there also is an overall plan for us. And sometimes when things don't always go our way, we have to realize that maybe there's something that we need to learn from uh, this mistake or this suffering or this not so happy time. And as far as keeping the household going, uh, I think just kind of having routines, you know, having a laundry routine, maybe not a perfect schedule because schedules sometimes make you feel a little too locked in, at least they do for me, but just having a routine. My routine is every morning, uh, Joseph collects the dirty laundry, which are two baskets, one in the bathroom, one at the end of the hall, and then I sort it. He's actually starting to help me sort it now, which is really, really nice. I've gone in there a couple times and he's had all the laundry sorted. Not quite right, but pretty well. I mean, he gets all the towels in the towel basket and he gets all the whites in the whites and then he puts everything else in another basket. So he does a pretty good job. So typically sometime there early morning, I get a load of laundry started. Again, just to keep things running. Uh, I like to plan menus uh, at least seven days out. Uh, sometimes I'll be planning all the way for a month if I'm doing freezer cooking or something or a big bulk cooking day. And so uh, just kind of having a routine and it, it, doesn't start out like that. I mean, when I had just one child, it wasn't always like that. And when I'm in a time where I have like, when I had just little toddlers and a newborn, those routines get our kitty wampus all the time. But as my kids age, you know, life is very different now that I have two adult kids, two teen kids and all, and the other four, no, two adults, two teens, and the other three are all school age kids. It's very different than when I had toddlers and babies. So when you do see things and maybe it looks like it's running smoothly, it's because I've had a ton of practice and I'm also at a much different stage than maybe some of you out there who are still in the newborn baby and the toddler stage because that's a whole different ball game. Did you have a job prior to having kids? 
Okay, I think I did answer that. Did you have a job prior to having kids? Yes, I was a teacher. I was a science teacher uh, for two years. She's curious about how we handle dating. So our kids have to wait until they're 18 to go on one-on-one -on -one dates. And I think just because simply I, Warren and I both really feel that the point of dating is not just to have a good time, but the point of dating is to uh, find to find that person that you are eventually going to marry. But they can have friends over. I mean, the girls could have boys over here. The boys can have girls over here. They can hang out, play games, you know, do things like that. But as far as one-on-one -on -one dating, that needs to wait. Did you and your husband come from large families? Well, he is number four of five siblings and I'm an only child. How is the wedding planning going? That is from Ashley Davidson. The wedding planning is going well. Uh, flowers and greenery has been coming in the mail and so Emily is uh, working at planning a day to uh, assemble uh, bouquets and corsages and boutonnieres. Maria's flower girl dress has been has come and that fits her beautifully. Next up Warren and I have to um, make plans for our uh, clothing. Emily and Sparky have been attending some marriage classes uh, through the through uh, their churches. They also have a marriage retreat coming up in January sometime. So lo lots of things like that are, are happening. It's definitely getting, you know, time is definitely marching forward, that's for sure. Metal Scrap and Chick, <laughs> love that handle. How do you handle grocery shopping when you've got multiple kids with you? I only have one child who's just turned 16 recently and it can be very difficult going to Walmart with her at times, LOL. She just wants too much stuff. So, boy, that's sort of, that's a, a real question, but I feel like it's a little bit tongue in cheek as well. Um, taking the teens shopping with me, they just know that I'm just not gonna buy them stuff. Uh, that, that's just how it goes. Um, the little kids, I guess they also know that they're, they just are not allowed to ask for things in the store. If they ask for something, I am not going to get it for them. If I say to them, you know, like when I do take them grocery shopping, I'll say, okay, you know, Peter, what kind of cereal do you want? And then he knows he can pick out a box of cereal and put it in the cart. But if they do, if they start doing that, oh, I want this, I want that, can I get this, can I get, I just, nope, that's it. We're not getting any treats, we're not getting any of anything. They're not perfect at that, and I'm not perfect. I mean, there have been times when they've asked for something and it was something that we were gonna get, I guess, and I just, oh, sure, yes, we, we can we can get a bucket of ice cream, because I was kind of thinking that we were gonna get a bucket of ice cream, and I think, ooh, but then they asked for it. But, okay, so, and so what's next here? So Rochelle asks, how do you do your insurance and budget? Do you both do your budget together? Um, okay, boy, this, this could get a little bit long here. So insurance, I'm not exact, so insurance. So insurance, being self-employed, we do not have insurance that's provided for us through any kind of employer or anything. For years and years and years, we provided, um, our own plan through, you know, through our, through a local insurance agent. And then there was the big, whatever they call it, the marketplace happened, right? The healthcare marketplace and the whole Affordable Care Act and all of that happened. And that took out, made our insurance premiums for the year increase by about 10 to $12,000. So things got really kind of crazy for a few years there. It was really, um, it was really hard for a few years there. Um, but then what happened is, I don't know if the numbers or whatever changed with the marketplace and we were actually able to um, apply through the marketplace. And so right now we get health insurance through the marketplace and that actually has given us, um, you know, somewhat of a discount on insurance so we don't have to pay as much as we, as we once were. I don't know if that, I, you know, I don't really know where it's going from here, if that gets appealed or repealed or exactly what's going on with all of that. But right now, that's where we're at for health insurance. As far as budgeting, we use a cash budget. And so we have envelopes and we talk about it. 
We just kind of have envelopes for different things and a certain, a set amount of cash goes into each one of those envelopes and we know that that is what that money is meant to be spent on. So we both know how much is available in those envelopes. If I remember to put the envelopes back, a lot of times I end up having the Walmart and food budget envelopes in my purse uh, just because I'm the one who does most of that shopping. But every once in a while he does some of that and then he's like, where are the envelopes? So then I have to go and grab them and put them back. We just kind of revisit it month by month. We also keep a notebook and so all you know we put down our monthly income at the top of the page and then he puts down he writes he has a line for each different thing you know that's not anything we print out it's just a notebook and then he puts down you know electric bill uh, cell phone bill church envelopes and then he always says to me you know he says look this over is there anything we need that I'm not thinking of and like if there's a birthday coming up or if there's some other event or something that we need money for registration fees for some activity our kids are in I go oh remember we need 60 bucks for the registration for whatever and then he'll or I'll just write it on that list so I wouldn't say that we sit down all the time together uh, unless we're going to change something up if we have a significant increase or decrease in pay uh, then we definitely sit down together and we start we look at it we go okay is there anything where we're feeling pretty tight and we want to increase or you know what do we want to save this money for are we saving this for a car are we saving this for a vacation or are we going to increase our retirement are we going to increase kids college savings you know what are we going to do then we definitely have a sit down but for the month to month um, pretty much just kind of run it by each other Tatiana Bautista she says how do you make time for each of your kids and your husband and what do y'all like to do as a family so making time for each other is just something that has to be intentional I don't have any great tips we don't go out on like a weekly date ourselves or we don't you know take our kids on weekly dates but just being intentional both of us um, both of us when we're thinking of what it is that we're going to do for fun and I would especially say Warren see I spend so much time with the kids with homeschooling and just being with them all the time that I don't so much I'm not always thinking about making more time for them because I do I mean I just spend all day long with my kids all the time sometimes it's great quality time and sometimes it's just simply quantity time uh, but Warren he is very very intentional about the things that he likes to do like hunting fishing uh, trapping snowmobiling four-wheeling all those different things that he loves to do he always makes time to take the kids with him so he'll say hey you know I have to go check traps you know Joseph Peter Maria you guys are coming with me this time he's very intentional about including the kids in the things that he likes to do and for us I we spend our evenings together I mean once the kids get into bed a lot unless it's a night that I'm gonna do some editing or something we usually just kind of spend time together last night uh, Emily and Sam and Warren and I all played a game chronology which is a very fun history game just being intentional about saying hey let's get off the devices and let's play a game or hey let's get off the devices and go outside but as far as Warren and I what do we do and we do work at planning planning date nights like we can feel it like all of a sudden it's like boy we haven't done something alone in a while and we both can can feel like wow we need something so and he's better again he's better at it than I am he definitely craves more of that one-on-one -on -one time he's way better about it than I am about trying to uh, set up a date uh, night or breakfast or something like that it's really about being intentional and I have to say he's definitely better at it than I am